Have you heard of CICD? Oh, well, if you haven't, this video is definitely for you. Hey, I'm Jameson, and today I'm going to be talking about CICD, also known as Continuous Integration and Continuous Deployment. I'm going to provide an overview of the principles of CICD, discuss some of the benefits of implementing it, and demonstrate how Jenkins can be used to automate and streamline your CICD processes. Let's go ahead and dive in. There are two phases to CICD, as the name suggests. We have the Continuous Integration, or CI phase, as well as the CD, or Continuous Deployment phase. In our CI phase, developers merge their code changes into a shared repository, which triggers an automated build process. This build process compiles the code, runs automated tests, and generates feedback on the success or failure of the build. In our CD phase, we're automating the deployment and the successful build to production. Jenkins is a popular open source automation tool that provides CI-CD processes. Jenkins can integrate with a wide range of tools and technologies including Git, GitHub, Maven, and Docker. It also provides a user-friendly interface for creating pipelines that automate the build, testing, and deployment of software applications. By using Jenkins, organizations can achieve faster and more reliable software delivery, improve collaboration between teams, and reduce the risk of errors or issues. What's up, everyone? Okay, so for our tutorial for today, we're going to go ahead and create a Jenkins Docker container, as well as a SonarCube Docker container. And then I'm going to show you guys how to set those up and how you would access them through the web console. It's going to be really cool, and I hope you guys enjoy it. But let's go ahead and dive in and see what happens. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and explain this docker compose.yml file that we're going to be using today. So we're going to be using some um, already existing images that are going to be found on Docker Hub. Uh, our first image is going to be for this Jenkins container. Um, and it's going to be using the actual Jenkins Docker image, and we're going to be using the Jenkins Slim image. Um, if you guys are unfamiliar uh, with this concept, uh, I explained it in a couple earlier videos, but uh, whenever we, we uh, use Docker images for a more production environment or even like locally, uh, it's more preferable to use the Slim version rather than the uh, actual latest version, just because the latest version is typically loaded with a bunch of... Um, packages that we're not necessarily going to need typically. So keeping it slim and just installing what you need is uh, usually easier and more preferred. But yeah, it, you can always just switch it, play around with it, uh, your images as needed. Uh, but yeah, just going through that letting you guys know. We're going to go ahead and run this as a privileged container. Uh, typically, you should not uh, be running your Docker containers as privileged. I'm going to go ahead and allow it as privileged uh, just because this is... Um, well, all of running locally and all for test. I'm going to go ahead and switch this uh, at a user for roots. And I'm going to go ahead and also port forward my port 8010 and port 8011 to port 8080 and port uh, 50,000 on the container. Port 8080 is going to be used by, um, well, both of these ports are actually going to be used by Jenkins. And we'll see that in just a moment when uh, we actually get everything started. Next up down here in our volume section, we'll see a Jenkins folder, as well as a uh, config folder and a mount folder in that Jenkins folder, in that Jenkins directory, more specifically. So over here are just gonna be a bunch of configurations and whatnot for Jenkins. And you'll see here when I open up this config uh, that I already have a bunch of um, preset stuff for Jenkins. That's because I actually already created um, a Jenkins server using this. And when you uh, actually mount your config folder like this, uh, this will just make sure that all of your configurations are actually preset whenever you launch this. So what I'm gonna do is delete this because I do not want the same configuration set. Just so we can uh, all work through this together. And I'll go ahead and recreate this config folder. And just for reference, these are both just empty folders that I pre-created. 
that are going to be uh, mounted with I dock or compose up. Next up, we have our second Docker uh, Docker container, which is going to be Sonar Cube. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Sonar Cube, Sonar Cube is used for code quality scanning um, and can be integrated with Jenkins. Uh, it's not necessarily I'm not necessarily going to be going into too too much details with Sonar Cube today, but uh, this will just show you guys how you would be able to um, create a Sonar Cube container. Uh, if you ever would need to, and then in a later video, we're going to talk about um, how we would be able to connect those together. But continuing on, we have our image, which is just going to be our Sonar Cube latest image. Uh, you'll see here I'm using the latest for Sonar Cube. Um, haven't really looked for the slim image uh, regarding Sonar Cube, so I'm just going to stick with latest. I know, terrible. Um, ports, we're going to be using port 8012 just to keep everything in line. And we're going to be forwarding it to port 9000. That is the port that Sonar Crib typically uses. And then you'll see here, I have a few mounted folders over here for Sonar Cube. Uh, and just like Jenkins, it's going to be just a config folder. And I'm going to delete these in just a second because I did create this earlier, as well as just a mounted folder for any mounted um, files I may want to add on. So let me go ahead and delete that config folder. And I'll just copy this one over. I thought that would work. Oh, it did. Cool. Okay, so now I'm sure that those are both clear. And we should be good to go ahead and Docker Compose up. So let me go ahead and run that. Docker Compose up. First thing it's going to do is pull the image if it hasn't. Uh, you'll see here it actually already pulled the image a while ago for me. So it has started the Jenkins Docker container as well as the Sonar Cube Docker container. Great. So if I go ahead and go back over to Docker, I can check using my Visual Studio Code extension that my Jenkins container has been created as well as my Sonar Cube. Great. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and open up my browser. And I'm going to go to localhost 10. Okay, just took a second to load, but yep, going to localhost 8010, you'll see something like this appear. And the first thing Jenkins is going to do is immediately prompt you for a uh, admin password. And I mean, implicitly, or like, yeah, implicitly, when we were going through this, I never mentioned an admin password. So we're going to need to find this somewhere. And Luckily, Jenkins does let us know that this is going to be found under the slash var Jenkins home secret file. So there are going to be two ways to be able uh, to extract this file. You're um, either going to need to exec onto the Docker container and direct yourself to this folder and grab the password from there. Or another way you can do it is if you go over here to the Docker container for using the Visual Studio Code um, extension. Or if you're just running this manually, you should be able to view the logs that way um, using Docker logs. If you view the logs, you should see here that initially um, somewhere within all of this junk, there should be a box like this. A uh, bunch of stars, bunch of stars. Um, and this is going to be the admin password. So it initially gets printed out in the logs and you should be able to grab it from there. Uh, but it also tells you if you're unable to find it in the logs, uh, if your log file is too large or if it's too uh, buried in there, you're always going to be able to find it from this um, directory. But upon initial creation, you'll you'll be able to um, pull the admin password from the Docker logs. OK, going back to Jenkins, let me go ahead and paste in that password and continue. Great. Looks like that worked. So next. 
Next step's gonna be to install our plugins. I'm gonna either select the plugins that we wanna install. I'm gonna go ahead and just install the suggested ones just to make everything easier. And let me retry that. No such package cloud beats folder. Huh, okay, let me just do that. Unselect that. And then let's go and install. Looks like it's freaking out a little bit because it is unable to find the starting installation of a few of these, but that should be fine. If this happens, we may need to uh, restart our server or actually rebuild this server just because it's been a while since I pulled the Docker image. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'll go ahead and repull the image and relaunch the container and then we'll see what happens. Looks like we're repulling that image. We'll go ahead and give it a minute and see what happens. Okay, looks like our container should be back up. Going back to Docker. Jenkins, let me go ahead and view the logs. A lot of this stuff we can just go ahead and run through real quick. We grab this admin password. And uh, going back to the initial install page, let's go ahead and paste in that password, install suggested pl plugins again. Great, looks like it worked this time. And you should be initially met with a uh, page like this. This is the reason why sometimes it's a little bit better not to use the um, slim version, just because everything that you typically need is already pre preloaded. So, um, you don't really have to go through um, the process of having to reinstall a bunch of these packages, which is why it's airing out initially. But uh, whenever this happens, all you really have to do is just retry a few times and it'll probably it'll, um, install what you need to. Uh, it's just typically really frustrating upon the first couple times because it'll run into some issues. So let's go ahead and uh, wait for this to air out and then we'll retry a couple times. Okay, so it looks like we er we actually were able to install two of these packages, but the others were unable to install. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, skip ahead just so we don't drag on for too long. But again, uh, if this fails, all you would really have to do is just press retry a couple times um, until your desired packages are installed. But let's go ahead and continue. Uh, when you reach this screen, it's, you're going to be prompted for a initial login. And um, you don't really have to give it a username, a password, or anything like that. Um, but yeah, you can just go ahead and skip in continuous admin. And then you'll be prompted for a URL. You don't really need to uh, worry about this too much as well uh, until you're actually getting into the nitty gritty of Jenkins. Uh, and you should be able to change this Jenkins configuration if needed. 
but you can just go ahead and save and finish once uh, you reach this page. And you'll see here, it's just giving me localhost 8010 just because I'm forwarding this to my localhost 8010. And great, that looks like Jenkins is all set up. If I press this start using Jenkins button, I should be sent to the initial Jenkins page. And so that's how you would set up Jenkins initially. And very quickly, if we actually go over to this uh, port 8012, same thing, we should be able to connect to our sonar cube container. And then the initial login for sonar cube will just be admin, admin. And that's always going to be the initial um, login credentials. Once you get past that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to prompt you to change the uh, initial admin password. And then once you actually update that password, you should be able to connect to Sonar Cube. So that's how you would launch and create your own instances of Jenkins in Sonar Cube. And once you're done with both of those, you will uh, be able to bring them down and uh, put them back up by just using the Docker Compose Up and Docker Compose Down commands. And if you did mount in those folders like I did, um, those should keep your configuration changes uh, persistent. So if you uh, all of your installed packages and whatnot should remain when you um, restart your Jenkins server as well as Sonar Cube. Okay, guys, that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Today, we discussed CICD, a software engineering approach that involves continuously integrating code changes, automatically building and testing those changes, and then deploying them to production. We also discussed Jenkins, a popular open source automation tool that supports our CI-CD processes, enabling organizations to achieve faster and more reliable software delivery. And with that, we've reached the end of our time together. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up or subscribe, or click on one of these other videos on the screen if you want to learn something else. Thanks for joining me today, and I will catch you guys in the next one.